So today we are going to have a look at a video that was made by Friendly Geordies on the Labor Party's Australia Future Housing Fund. Now, this is one of the most ridiculous, pathetic pieces of legislation that I've ever seen. It is so far inadequate of what is required to fix this problem. It is just absolutely beyond belief. Now, before we go and we have a look at the things that Friendly Geordies has missed, if you want to learn more about this, I would suggest that you check out this YouTube channel, Swollen Pickles. Now, this guy has done video after video after video showing the shortcomings of this ridiculous, pathetic fund. Um, now, this is a guy who is he's not left-wing, he's not right-wing, he has made lots of videos attacking the Labor Party, attacking the Liberal Party, attacking the Greens. He'll attack the left and he'll attack the right. He is not an ideologue like Friendly Geordies. Now, don't get me wrong. Friendly Geordies has made some very, very good videos. The video he made about Nicole Flint or the videos, absolutely outstanding. Now, Anyone that can cause a radical, crazy feminist like Nicole Flint to have a meltdown in Parliament and call the man a misogynist has my respect. The things he's said about Nicole Flint are 100% correct. Um, he's also nailed John Barillaro for his unbelievable corruption. But the man is an ideologue. If you go through his videos, he is constantly – defending Labor, promoting Labor, and attacking the Liberals. Um, and it's very, very obvious in this video to anyone who's watching that he is quite simply leaving out very, very key pieces of information. Along with the Greens, even though I think the Greens have a far better housing policy than what the Labor Party does, both the Greens and Friendly Geordies are talking about the housing crisis affecting women and children fleeing domestic violence, even though the data is very, very clear that children are statistically far more likely to be physically abused and assaulted by their mothers than their fathers, that they're statistically just as likely to be murdered by women or, importantly, more likely to be murdered by their mother than their father. Both the Greens and Friendly Geordies are talking about this being important because it's about women fleeing um, violence, the violence of men. It's just completely and utterly so far from reality. It's not funny. Now, Friendly Geordies calls this this policy. He calls it at one point sheer genius. Sheer genius. Now. I'm going to go through now some of the um, the points that he left out, didn't mention at all. Um, and it's not just me saying this. There's, there's massive Labor Party supporters like the CFMEU who agree with me, members of the Labor Party, members of the left, members of the right, um, who agree with me that this, this policy and this fund is so far inadequate, it's not even funny. Now, let, let's go through them. So one thing that is not mentioned in this 65-minute video, 65 minutes, and he didn't mention, he didn't spend a second talking about public housing and what the Labor Party, they want you to think. They want you to think that Australia are world leaders for public housing and that we have some of the highest rates of public housing in the world. This is a complete myth. This is so far from reality, it's not even funny. Of all of the homes in Australia, only 3.8% are public houses. I'll say that again. Only 3%, 3.8% of all the homes in Australia are public houses. Now, if you compare it with these other countries in the OECD, as you can see on this graph, we are very, very close to the bottom. and. Not only are we towards the bottom of the OECD, public houses in Australia, the percentage of housing that are public houses has gone down and down and down over the last 50 years. And it is one of the, not the only reason, but one of the key most important reasons as to why today we have a rental crisis and a massive 
housing shortage, not just for women fleeing violence, but for men as well, men and boys as well. They don't want to talk about that. Um, Friendly Geordies made no mention of foreign investment, didn't talk about foreign investment once in a 65-minute presentation. Anyone who knows anything about Australia's shortage of housing and the rental crisis knows that one of the main reasons is our foreign investment laws. People can come to Australia, buy our houses, have them unoccupied, but the same exact countries that where countries like China that are buying up our houses in bulk, we cannot buy their houses. They don't allow us to buy their houses, but we allow them to buy ours. It's a ma- ma- one of the major reasons, and Friendly Geordies did not mention it. He also did mention the CFMEU. Now, in a speech at the National Press Club, they said, and I quote, it is nowhere near sufficient. Nowhere near sufficient, and it is going to make the problem bigger. Now, the CFMEU are one of the biggest donors to the Australian Labor Party. They are traditionally one of the biggest supporters of the Labor Party and still are. Now, even they're saying that this is is inadequate, and this is going to make the problem far bigger than what it already is. Um, And they also mentioned in this speech that that the CFMEU made that the Oxford Economics Report cited that we are short 750,700 homes. I'll say that again. We are at this moment short 750,700 homes. And Labor's grand plan is to build only, only 30,000 homes over the next five years. And when you look at the mass, they're talking about $86,000 a home. So it's not possible. They're not going to build 30,000 homes. Anyone who's paying attention knows they're not going to build 30,000 homes. This is an aspiration which will not get met. It's an absolute con. Um, another thing that wasn't talked about were the costs involved in this future fund. Um, now, just to start, this is just some of the costs, not all of them. The CEO of the fund is on $1.125 million a year. Then you've got Peter Costello, who is the chair. He's on $240,000, $247,000 a year. Um, now, now, the other thing that's uh, swollen pickles, and again, if you want to know about all the reasons why this report this report is ridiculous. This not report, this fund is absolutely ridiculous and it will make no mistake about this at all. If this is not amended if this is not blocked and then there isn't some negotiation to make it far greater or we don't cut immigration or stop rising it at such a ridiculously high level, in five years' time, I promise you, I guarantee you, we will have higher rates of homeless homelessness and we will have more people, far, far more people living under rental stress. Now, the one good thing about this is the fact that right now, the federal government is Labor, and every single state in Australia is also Labor. So in five years' time, when we have more homeless people and more people rent stress and rents are far greater, we all know exactly who to blame. It's Labor, federally, and Labor at the state level. At the moment, they like to say, well, we agree there's a huge problem. It's the federal government's fault. It's the state government's fault. It's the previous government's fault. But in five years' time, they're not going to be able to say that because Labor have control of this country pretty much, apart from Tasmania. And even there, um, the gambling companies are saying that the Liberal Party are heavy underdogs to win. So it's highly likely in a couple of years' time, it's going to be Labor across the board. So we're all going to know exactly who to blame for this obscene shortage of housing, this ridiculous homeless um, problem that we have not just for women, but actually for men as well. And there are more homeless men in this country than homeless women. The Greens won't tell you that. 
friendly Geordies won't tell you that. The Labor Party won't tell you that, but it's a fact. It's a very well-documented fact. Now, the other thing that um, Swollen Pickles has done is he's actually looked at these. They've actually got similar schemes set up, a medical research future fund. Now, over the first eight years, it's only had a return of four, on an average return of 4.1%, which is not enough to cover costs. If the Housing Future Fund only goes at that level, it's not going to be enough to cover the costs. That's how much the costs are. And Friendly Geordies in 65 minutes failed to mention the costs of this once. Uh, a ridiculous, stunning omission to not mention the costs of the fund. Um, and also the Disability Care Australia Fund, which again has not performed very well, 1.5% over the first eight years. Um, it's a ridiculous thing to omit. Um, but I'm not an expert on this topic. This is not my area of expertise. It's a channel that is an expert on this is Swollen Pickles. Check out these videos and you will see in great detail the reasons why this future fund is absolutely ridiculous. It will, not might, will, I guarantee it. If anyone offers to, if you ever get anyone, you can find someone silly enough to have a bet with you that the homeless rate in five years' time is going to be lower than what it is today, bet everything you've got on it. The homeless rate is going to be higher. Guaranteed, as there is nothing surer. Rents will be far higher. More people are going to be under rental stress because this fund is an absolute disgrace. Absolute disgrace. And it's going to make our housing woes far, far worse than what they need to be. There is no need for a country like Australia that has so much land and so few people to have these sorts of issues. Um, I'm going to leave you, though. It's not just me that agrees with the Greens that the housing fund is pathetic. It's members of the Labor Party. In fact, the ACT, there was Labor some- Party. This is coming from Swollen Pickles. Again, check it out. Great channel. Um, and you can see that it's not just me who's saying that Anthony Albanese is going to cause a housing catast- catastrophe in this country. He's forcing more Australians to be homeless with his ridiculously high rates of immigration. 1.5 million new immigrants in Australia. That's how many we're welcoming over the next five years. Anthony Albanese, where are these people going to live? You're building, you've got an aspiration which you won't meet. I guarantee you won't meet it of only 30,000 homes, but you're bringing in 1.5 million new immigrants. This is absolutely insane what you're doing. And I've forgotten too. That's another thing I, I that Friendly Geordies forgot to mention was the high rate of immigration, 1.5 million. At no point did he mention that number or that fact that Australia's population is going to grow by 1.5 million extra people because of record levels of immigration. What he did do, do was, though, he, he mocked it and he ridiculed people that were talking about immigration saying, in a mocking tone, an extra billion people, which is a thousand million. No one's saying we're bringing in an extra billion people or a thousand million. We're saying 1.5 million new people, 30,000 new homes. You don't need to be a genius to know that that will make the problem bigger. You know, Friendly Geordies, all he can do is mock and ridicule and make jokes about people that are questioning raising very, very serious, reasonable questions about where are these people going to live, these extra immigrants that are coming in. You know, he's attacking – they can't attack the arguments. All they can do is sort of attack the person because it's absolutely pathetic. But I'm going to leave you guys now with an example of the ACT Labor that agrees with me and agrees with Swollen Pickles that this housing fund is an absolute disgrace that will make the problem bigger. It's not going to fix it. It's going to make it worse. Um, All right, so I'm going to leave you with that. And then please check out Swollen Pickles because he explains this in fantastic detail. 
Here we go. ACT yeah, Labor yeah. agree with me. And the Greens, let's have a look. His favourite villain said last week that didn't really get picked up on. The ACT Labor conference just passed a motion, the Labor conference, calling on the Labor government to commit to the Greens' proposal to spend $2.5 billion a year on public and affordable housing. Yep, this is true. The ACT Labor conference did pass a motion to call on the federal government to commit to an additional investment of at least $2.5 billion a year. For what it's worth, ACT Labor also called on the federal Labor government to address the design flaws within the HAWF as well. On top of that, we've also seen the CFMEU come out and offer what could only be described as a lukewarm endorsement for the bill. The kind of endorsement you'd have to think may not have been forthcoming with a CFMEU, not a major ALP donor. The federal government has obviously laid out the Housing Australia Future Fund, which we do believe Parliament should pass as soon as possible. Putting all that aside, the rest of the National Secretary of the CFMEU speech at the National Press Club was a fairly damning indictment on the federal government's lack of ambition when it comes to addressing the scale of the problem. Victoria has the big housing build program. Queensland has the housing investment fund. There's the Together Home Transition Program in New South Wales and the growing and renewing public housing program right here in the ACT. And these are all worthy, positive initiatives. But let's get this clear. They are nowhere near sufficient to close the gap. Given the importance of this problem, we are being way too timid. And I think all of us here know that. As soon as I got this job, I commissioned independent economists at Oxford Economics Australia to take a deep look at this. For a start, they confirmed that even with all those new programs I just mentioned, factored in, we are not going to come close to closing the gap. As we sit here today, we are about 750,000 social and affordable dwellings short of where we need to be. It is a gap that's been widening rapidly. In fact, it's 18% wider than it was a decade ago. And even with all that's been promised by governments lately, with all of those initiatives, it will still grow by another 26% by 2041. So what do we need to do to close the gap?